You're watching SKST Radio. Well, hello, welcome, welcome to SKST Radio Podcast Show. This is our sh- our third show of the new year, and we have no other than Miss Naomi McDougal Jones, who's the star of the new movie. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited! Bite me. <laughs> So we're going to introduce Miss Naomi. Miss Naomi, welcome to the show. Tell us all about yourself and how you got here, girl. Tell us about yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, and your intro is so exciting. I was, like, <laughs> I was, like, well, I was listening to your intro. Music. Girl power. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I'm the writer, uh, star producer of the indie film Bite Me, which is a subversive romantic comedy about a real life vampire and the IRS agent who audits her. Um, <laughs> and uh, how did I get here? I started off as an actress. I wanted to be an actress from the time I was like four years old. Um, and then when I went to college for that and got out and started being an actress and became very quickly uh, annoyed with the roles available for women. Um, they're pretty, pretty horrible, <laughs> as we all know. Um, and so I became a filmmaker initially just to because I wanted to see better women on better female characters on screen. Mm-hmm. Um, and then and then once I became a filmmaker, I, I also realized I had something to say uh, and that I didn't want to just be an actress saying other people's words for the rest of time. So That's I'm nice. a filmmaker also. Wow. So how did you get into it? I mean, how did you st- cross that line from being an actress to actually doing the filmmaking? Um, <laughs> we, so here's, I'll tell you the real story, what happened. Okay. So a, a, um, a, a colleague of mine who we have gone to acting school together, Caitlin Gold, and I were having lunch one day and we were both act, both acting at the time and we were sort of ranting about the stupid roles built for women and also just like kind of the shitty experience of being an actress in general. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. um, we were like, we should just make our own feature film. And we're like, yeah, we should make our own feature film. (laughs) And I was like, and all I was like, I had written plays at that point that had been produced, but I'd never written a film. But I was like, I could, I could write better female characters than this. So I was like, I could, I'll write a screenplay and we'll produce it and we'll act in it. And, um, and we had no idea what we were getting into. (laughs) <laughs> but, but I think that was great because I think I never have started. I'm so grateful that we did start. Um, and so then literally, I mean, we, we'd both been to acting school. We both acted in a lot of films, but we had no, we had no idea how to actually make a movie. And so we, we made a spreadsheet. We Googled every film producer we could find in New York City where we were living at the time. And we put them into a spreadsheet and then we just started cold calling and emailing them and asking them like, will you have coffee with us and tell us how to make a movie basically. That was smart. <laughs> but but like as in the position I am now, I, I feel like if I got an email like that, I'd be like, because mm, we knew nothing. I mean, we were like, literally, could you t- take us to coffee and tell us how to make a movie? Mm-hmm. Um, but enough people said yes, that we, we kind of figured it out. Like we just had film school by coffee date. We like, we just kind of kept getting enough information to solve the next problem immediately in front of us. Um, And about three years later, we had uh, my first feature film, Imagine I'm Beautiful, which we made for $80,000. Oh, wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. (laughs) Well, so let me ask you this. When you and your, your, your friend, when you guys, started how how did y'all decide who was going to do what you know was it like who was stronger in one area you know were you more strong in the writing aspect of it or the directing you know who how did you decide how did you do that well so I was I had plays like I said and Caitlin had never was is not a writer um so that was sort of easy easy peasy easy to to decide that and then originally we were both going to act in the film because that was what we were both primarily doing at that time and I was going to write us both roles and then the producing thing was kind of like well we're both super organized and we're the ones who want to make this film happen so like I guess we'll produce it Um, and we did eventually bring on another producer Joanna Bowser who had actually made a movie before which was super helpful (laughs) (laughs) Um, but yeah and then um Neither of us wanted to direct 
So we um, went on a search for a director and we eventually found Meredith Edwards who directed both that film and she directed Bite Me. Nice, nice. So let's go back to the American Horror Story. How did you get the role uh, in that movie? Oh, so that is, no, I wasn't in American Horror Story, Naomi Grossman. Um, oh, that's Naomi Grossman. Okay. A, I misunderstood. Wait, the, the, I know. It's very unusual to have more than one Naomi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so Naomi Grossman, um, uh, it plays Chrissy, my roommate in the film. Um, okay. She's the really head vampire in the movie. Um, and she, uh, she played, yeah, she played Pepper on American Horror Story and is like, has this amazing cult fan following. She, um, I, like she, her fans like make cakes of her head. I don't know. It's like amazing. To, people are obsessed with her in that character. It's amazing. Well, that makes more sense now. Cause I was looking at that photo cause they put both photos <laughs> side by side. Right. So I'm thinking, is that her? And I'm like, wow, I got to ask her because it's, it's totally different. I'm like, did they shave your hair? You know, I was like, I was going to ask you because I could not get it in my head that yeah. that was the same person. <laughs> nope, so, I'm on the blue hair and the facial tattoo. <laughs> so, so no, no, no. On the, um, on the, um, the advertisement that the studio gave me, it was a picture of you in a picture of the American Horror Story character so yeah. it made it seem like that was you and oh, so okay. that's what we were trying to figure out I was like wow that makeup is amazing you know and I'm like that looks nothing like her I mean oh my god I have to ask her did she shave her hair you know so we thought that that was you on the from the I'll, I'll email it to you so you can see okay we thought we was like trying to figure that one out to save our life it was like I gotta ask her I gotta ask her <laughs> Movie magic. Okay. Right, yeah. right. So yeah. fast forward to uh, Bite Me. So how did you come up with that concept? So um, funny story, I was acting on the set of Boardwalk Empire and I got to chatting one day with one of the extras on a very long shoot day. And um, over the course of like 13 hours, this woman revealed to me that she identifies as a vampire. Right, that was my face. I was like, what? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Uh, and then I asked a lot of questions and came to understand that, that she is part of an actually global community of people who identify as vampires. And they don't they don't believe they're supernatural. They don't you know, they don't think they're going to live forever or anything like that. Um, but they do believe they need to feed on blood um, and or energy to stay healthy. OK, um, so. Uh, so I yeah, so I became I, I was like completely fascinated and blown away by this idea and so I went home and just fell down the internet rabbit hole of researching this community there they have a lot of vlogs on YouTube that I watched and wow. was just sort of like was sort of like completely fascinated but also pretty inspired by this group of people who have a conviction so deep um in in this identity that they're willing to you know, often get disowned from their families, um, mm -hmm. to, to, you know, lose friends, to really be pushed to the fringes of society just because they're so committed to living their truth. Um, and I was kind of inspired by that. So anyway, so I became completely obsessed with that and wanted to make a movie about them. And then I also love romantic comedies very deeply uh, and particularly the ones from the 80s and 90s that are actually like smart, funny, good movies. Oh yeah, yeah. Um... Like a, a when Sarah met Harry, uh, was Sarah met Harry, you know those movies like that with uh, exactly. uh, you know, the cute guys and and Tom Hanks and all that yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and so I so I so I wanted to write and I feel like that genre has taken a very depressing turn in the last couple decades into just like being very dumb movies. Um, mm -hmm. And so I wanted to to write one for today that was also hopefully smart and funny and like actually just a good movie. Nice. Nice. And you guys filmed that in New York? What did you film? We did. It? You did. We did. Okay. Did you like it? Was it hard with COVID and everything? Um, so we shot it before COVID luckily. Okay. Okay. Thought, because it would have been very difficult during COVID. Yes. Um, and very expensive. Films have gotten so much more expensive, but the, there's a funny story. The, um, 
the there's a big park scene towards the end of the film with like all of the characters from the film come together for this big climax in Central Park. And um, it just so happened that the day we were shooting that scene was the was the was a solar eclipse. <laughs> And so it was like a Tuesday and we picked that day to shoot in Central Park because we figured like, well, nobody like there won't be that many people in Central Park on a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But instead, all of New York was in Central Park because they were watching the solar eclipse. <laughs> wow. And so we're trying to shoot this scene and, and many of us, including myself, are in vampire costumes. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we're shooting the scene in Central Park and there are like hundreds of people around us who are so confused as to why we're running around in vampire. <laughs> and they kept being like, <laughs> this is this a come on. <laughs> they were like, is this a play for the eclipse? And we're like, no, we're trying to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> that's too funny that is too funny i bet so now your co-star how did you come up with that guy he was pretty cute christian colson yeah um he is pretty cute so uh that that was a tough part to cast um so i i play the the lead female character and who falls in love with the irs agent and and you know with a romantic comedy if there's not chemistry between the co-stars like you have it's no movie. It doesn't matter how good the script is. If there's not chemistry, the film's not going to work. Right. Um, but we were trying to get a name, uh, you know, a, a known actor for that part. And when you're a small film like we are, you can't actually audition. You don't get to audition the big stars. You just like you send them an offer right. and then they say yes or no. Um, and so uh, we, we specifically wanted a Harry Potter cast member because we um, we we kind of guessed that the Harry Potter the people who love Harry Potter would probably also love this movie. Mm -hmm. um, so we were trying to get that audience over. And so, um, and Christian played Tom Riddle in the Harry Potter movies. Mm -hmm. um, and so when we got to him, the his agent wouldn't let him audition for us, but he allowed us to have a meeting with him before, okay. before we cast him. And so it was decided that I needed to go to the meeting to like see if I could kind of like suss out whether or not we might have chemistry, mm -hmm. uh, which is like a really weird thing to try to do covertly. Um, <laughs> and uh, and met him and he's so lovely. And um, but but our fear was that he's actually he was actually too gorgeous because that character is supposed to be very nerdy and mm -hmm. weird and and doesn't have a girlfriend. And you need to believe that he this guy doesn't have a girlfriend. And Christian's like quite beautiful um but when i met him he i could see like that he had this sort of inner weirdo that was like that we i that i knew we could get out of him mm -hmm. um and so we we had that meeting and then we were very lucky that he said yes <laughs> well it was a great fit it was a great fit i mean i really enjoyed uh the chemistry with you and the other ladies um at the, the the black guy, the, the boss man, he was hilarious. He was hilarious. <laughs> he totally ignored that woman all the time. <laughs> He's my <laughs> favorite. What was that all about? It was like, uh, we don't have enough room. <laughs> Harold, Harold Surratt. Oh my God. When he auditioned, we were just like, yes. <laughs> And I mean, I every time he and Annie Golden, who plays Faith, are on screen together, th those are my favorite scenes in the movie because they're just um, so funny to me. Um, oh my gosh! And Harold, bless him, he's such a sweet guy. And at, at the after after filming was over, he came up. He went up to our costume designer and he said, "Could I?" could I possibly buy the pants from you that I was wearing in this movie? He's like, could you? <laughs> he was like, you seem really cool. And if you chose these pants, these pants must also be cool. And I don't know how to buy cool pants. So could I buy them from you? <laughs> and we were like, he really girl. was a nerd, huh? <laughs> oh my God. We were like, you can have the pants. It's fine. <laughs> How funny. How, see, and that's what I mean. That chemistry was there. I seem like you guys had a great time on the set. Uh, and that's what that's what you like. You know, that's something that that every set probably needs is the chemistry and everyone to bond together. And it sounded like you guys did a good job. 
So great job, great job. Hats off to your casting, <laughs> directing, and acting. <laughs> And writing. <laughs> it was. It was a very, very joyful. Wow. Wow. So what type of um what type of wisdom can you give to someone that, that's doing exactly what you're doing that wants to get where you are right now? Um, don't wait for permission. Um the the pipelines into this business are smaller than they've ever been before. There, there, there are fewer ways in because of the sort of, um, because basically five corporations now own every media company. Um, and, and it's true now as it has always been that if you're not a white man, there are even fewer pipelines for you into the industry. Um, but the world desperately needs stories from you. <laughs> they desperately specifically need stories from people who are not white guys. And, um, so if like the world will lose out if you if you just like feel like you can't do it until somebody picks you like you have to choose yourself and however and like just find a way to make your stories and get them to audiences and it can often feel like well like that's not as good or like I, I don't have I, I'm like I how do I know if I'm good enough until somebody tells me I am but mm -hmm the most fulfilling experiences I've had have been doing it outside of the system and just like telling, telling a story that, um, that mattered to me and, and finding audiences who it also mattered to and connecting with them directly. Um, so, I mean, if I, if I learned how to have, make a film through coffee dates, so can you, right, <laughs> you know, like exactly. just, you just figure it out. Like you, you, you just keep solving the problem immediately in front of you and just keep moving forward. Nice. Nice. Well, so now what are your plans? What's the, what's the next project? What's, what's up next? <laughs> um, well, my co-star Christian and I actually wrote a TV series uh, version of Bite Me because people kept asking for a sequel and we were like, a sequel? <laughs> like this is an indie film. Nice. So, but, but what we took from that is that people want to hang out with these characters more. So we wrote a TV series that we're shopping around. Um, and then my third feature film we're shooting in March of 2023 and it's called Hammond castle. And it's about a, it's a magical realism piece about a seven month pregnant woman who gets locked overnight in a castle full of famous ghosts. Wow. That seems <laughs> fun. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So what inspires you to, to, to do these right, these different shows in writing? Um, I guess I, I write in very different genres every time. Like my Imagine and Beautiful is a psychological thriller, Bite Me's Romantic Comedy, Hammond Castle sort of a magical realism drama. But I think the thing that connects them is that I'm, I'm always interested in story as a tool to build empathy. And so I'm always looking at sort of who are the people that audiences don't want to like and, and how can I write a story that, that brings them around to empathizing with that person? Yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, the, the story uh, would bite me. I really, really enjoyed that. And, and, and your heart does go out to her, you know, it's sort of like, Oh, poor thing, you know, <laughs> you know, it, it was like that, you know, it was just like one of those tearjerker type moments, you know, and it's like, is she going to get a man or not? You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, because you know, which you might not automatically feel for a vampire, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, um, you know, can't tell the story, but I mean, I think it's a story that people most definitely want to get out there and see. So how can people see this new this new movie? Um, so it is available for pre-order now on Apple TV and iTunes. And then starting February 8th, um, you'll be able to see it on iTunes, Apple TV, but also Amazon and Google Play. Um, nice. And you will have to pay individually to rent or buy it. It's not on a subscription streaming service, but, and I would uh, encourage you to do that because the streaming platforms have really killed indie, indie film um, because they've sort of convinced audiences that they should expect unlimited content for $8.99 a month. Um, and so if you want to hear more different voices and you want to support independent artists, paying the $2.99 to rent a film uh, really is the best way. Nice. Nice. Okay. So Naomi, I have the trailer. I want to show it to the audience. 
but I'm going to show it. And then before I say goodbye before, because I never am successful at coming back <laughs> after showing the trailer on YouTube. So if it mess up, I love you. Thank you so much for doing Thank the show. <laughs> and I want to invite you back whenever you need some support. I'm Thank here you. for you. You can Google me. Uh, the, your your uploads will be available. Uh, use them. Feel free. Uh, we're going to get them out there to as many people as possible. Uh, so pretty soon, this program will be going on Amazon and on Roku. So uh, all of our interviews will be replayed, you know, uh, all the time. So people get to see it all the time. So again, thank you so much. You're absolutely gorgeous. Uh, we appreciate the time. We appreciate your mind for working and making this happen for the women out there. It gives inspiration and your words of wisdom was great. Thank you so much. Now let's thank look at the trailer. Okay. People are going to crack up when they see this. <laughs> okay. My name is Sarah Woods. I belong to the House of Twilight. <laughs> we are a collective of independent vampires. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I'm not supernatural, obviously. We have been under investigation by the IRS and we have just received a ruling that we are not a legitimate church. Independent vampires, can you tell me what that is? We need to feed on it, stay healthy. Oh. I'm glad. <laughs> Who are you? My job is really boring. <laughs> Ulysses is my favorite book. I like The Bachelor. It's my favorite TV show. You're kind of a weirdo. Many real vampires hide their darker natures from people at their jobs. What is your job? I'm a kindergarten teacher. Of course you are. I thought that maybe you liked me, which was stupid, obviously. I do, I do like you. No, you don't. <sighs> That first night, it was so real. It was like I knew something about you, about us. I only just met you. I know, I wasn't going to say anything because I didn't want to sound like some lunatic stalker person. You know what? I don't care. I want to be your lunatic stalker person. <laughs> you don't do it for eight years. We have to go. And now you're making eyes at that guy? <gasps> Is there a woman in your bedroom? We had sex. Do you know how much trouble I could get into? You have no idea what it is like to have people stare at me from the second I leave my house. Maybe they're staring at you because you are yelling in the middle of the sidewalk. Hello. You think that this isn't going to go the same way? It always does. No, I don't. You make me want everything I thought I was better than. Sarah! So you want to go out with me, but I have to be a secret? No, no. Because you just continue your audit case, suppose you just... And after the audit's over? And you just met you. Please. Wait, you're not going to bite me, are you? We don't bite. It's not sanitary. That's right, then. I did it. Wow. <laughs> All right. Well, we got a few more seconds then. So that was amazing. And it was so much energy. And I just enjoyed it. I just really enjoyed that whole concept. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there should be a sequel to Bite Me. Bite Me too. <laughs> Bite Me also. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Naomi. Thank you for being on the show. Uh, like I said, if you need us, we're here for you. Uh, God you. bless you and, and, and all your, your adventures and, and just keep it going. Keep it coming. Keep it coming because people need what you have to offer, especially in these times and days. Thank you, Cammie. Thanks so much for having me. You're welcome. Okay, everybody, until next week, right here at SKST Radio. Bye-bye. <laughs> You're watching SKST Radio.